Okay, it's week 16 of the Premier League season. These matches were played between December the 9th and the 10th. And the early match was at the London Stadium with Chelsea in good form. And David Moyes looking for his first win. And they were much improving their stern effort last week at the Etihad. And the Hammers continued that renewed belief and were rewarded when Analtovic beat Courtois from 10 yards after a sweet, neat passing move. 1-0 West Ham. That was inside five minutes. Thereafter, Chelsea started to control possession and the Hammers were limited to occasional quick counters. Their defence, however, was resolute and Adrian was looking sharp, retaining his place with Hart looking on from the dugout. Chelsea were forcing West Ham further and further back, increasing the pressure, but they couldn't get the breakthrough. Indeed, just before the half-time break, West Ham threatened to make it 2-0 into the second half, and it was more of the same. Conte freshened things up with first Pedro, then Moses, and finally William coming on. But as the clock ran out, their efforts became more desperate. Although De Morata did miss a guilt age chance, and on 82 minutes, missed another when Hazard of all people blasted high and wide. Moyes was simply gushing with happiness as the whistle blew. Is that Chelsea out of the title race, I asked. So to Wembley, hmm, Spurs. Needn't get back on track and stoke desperate for a result to hoard their slide towards the relegation zone. Spurs were quickly onto the front foot and they had a piece of luck when a cross was helped into the net via two stoked defenders. The infor unfortunate short cross getting the OG against his name. That was on 21 minutes. That helped relax Spurs and they took control. Butland saved from an Ericsson free kit. Kane missed a sitter. Before on 53 minutes, Ali with a great assist put Bruce on, who delightfully steered it into the corner with Butland helpless. Minutes later, Kane finally got his goal from a cross with a commanding header. Spurs wrapped it up with two further goals from Ericsson and Kane hits again before Stoke got a late consolation. Pochettino was happy, but Hughes looked like a coach who's under pressure. Leicester arrived at St James's Park in good form and filled in an unchanged side, but were rocked back by an early strike by Pozzolat on eight minutes. And it was nearly two when Gale went very close. Leicester, however, started to get more uh, into the game and on 20 minutes Morris who seems to be improving by, week by week picked up the ball near halfway and marched down the field and hit a crisp shot into the corner to level things Newcastle needed to be on their guard as Vardy looked dangerous up the other end Schmeichel pushed a good effort wide but it remained one each at the break the second half uh, period opened very quietly, but on the hour it was lit up when Gray whacked the ball after a, uh, a sublime layup by Al, Al Brighton. But Newcastle, roared on by the partisan crowd, got a scruffy equaliser through Gale via a deflection. In the last few minutes, Leicester looked hungry for the winner and Okazaki, hidden by head bandages from a collision earlier, was about uh, uh, about to stab the ball at goal. And the, the defender made a terrific block. Only you could see his effort hit the back of the net. So Leicester left with the win. Uh, Newcastle, another defeat. And a threat of an early return to the championship. So to Selhurst Park with Bournemouth the visitors. Early chances for Palace, but Defoe on 10 minutes converted after some nice in interplay following a corner. 
form of 1-0. But Palace continued to have the edge in possession and Sacco was clipped by Begovic and Milojevic stroked in the penalty to level things. However, Palace weren't finished and Dan scored a second just before half time. But amazingly that wasn't it either. Uh, the ball was hoofed upfield and Defoe on the right edge of the penalty box hit a ridiculously looping shot over Speroni and into the net. So we were tied up at two each at the break. The second half couldn't keep up with that excitement. But there was some late drama again at Selhurst Park. Sahar goes down from a Daniels Channelty. Challenge. Penalty for Palace. Well, Benteke decided to, he was taking it, even though Milojovic had already scored one. And then he hit a tame effort into the keeper's hands. Roy Hodgson wasn't too pleased with that. So it ended two each. Okay. Now Burnley played Watford at Turf Moor. And they started the day 7th and Watford 8th respectively. And on paper it looked like a good contest. They both had early chances. But maybe the very cold weather that led to some over exuberant challenges. And soon Watford were down to 10 following a red card. Burnley made the extra man count on the stroke of half time as Arfield finished a neat move. Burnley are playing good football at the moment and seventh doesn't flatten, flatter them. Into the second half and the ten men were causing the Burnley, Burnley defence a few problems with Richarlison their best player. Burnley were denied a second when a late offside was given but they saw out the game and so they remain seventh. The bottom side uh, had West Brom at home. And uh, it was the rift of quality in the first half. We're talking about Swansea here, by the way. But Bonnie, who started to improve lately, finally broke the deadlock with a goal on 81 minutes. And they should have made it too. But... Anyway, Swan Swansea, grateful for the win, 1-1-0. One, one, okay, so let's move on to Sunday's games. First up, Arsenal at St. Mary's. And Southampton got off to a cracking start. Within two minutes, they were one up when Austin got ahead of his marker and clipped it past the advancing check. He could have made it two a few minutes later, but the effort went wide. Arsenal came into it after that and it was uh, pretty even up until the break. Into the second half and Bertrand on the break should have got Southampton second but his effort tamely went wide. Arsenal were hardly peppering Foster's goal and even when Giroud and Wiltshire came on it looked like back to back defeat. But then on 87 across from Sanchez on the left a neat flick from Giroud and Arsenal had snatched a point. OK, now let's move on to the first derby. Everton visiting Anfield. Allardyce's toppies rejuvenated by Big Sam and uh, Klopp's side scoring goals for fun. Well, the home side totally dominated possession in the first half even with Firmino and Coutinho warming the bench. Uh, warming was probably not the right word there. It was absolutely freezing at Anfield. But it was a re rear guard action from Everton and Rooney and Sigurdsson uh, were spending most of the time helping their defence out. So Calvert-Lewin up front looked an isolated figure and the ball kept coming back Henderson was controlling the midfield, but uh, to be honest, Pickford didn't have to rescue Everton as they lacked a cutting edge Liverpool. So it was up to that man Salah to provide the inspiration, which he did. Swiveling in from the right wing and launching a fierce strike, curled round Williams and into Pickford's net. 
So Liverpool uh, won up. The second half followed the same pattern, but with Schneiderlin and Lennon on, Everton's sporadic breaks were becoming a little bit more frequent. Liverpool again lacked that final pass, and eventually Salah was withdrawn and replaced by Firmino. It looked like Liverpool would get home with a 1-0, but then out of the blue, Everton, uh, a punt forward into Liverpool's heart, Calvert-Lewin chases for the ball with Lovren, uh, a gentle nudge from the Liverpool defender and Lewin tumbles over in the box and the ref points the spot. Klopp went ballistic on the touchline and who else? Wayne Rooney steps up and blasts the ball down the middle and it's one each. Rooney just loves scoring at Anfield. Well, with 90% of Anfield seething, the game ended one each and Klopp spent a large chunk of time remonstrated with the ref after the final whistle. Okay, let's now move on to the game of the week. The clash at Old Trafford between one and two in the league. Man City arriving, uh, and they had just suffered a, a loss, um, albeit a meaningless one, in the Ukraine. There was a high expectation, expectation of a classic encounter. Uh, Wario left Aguero on the bench. Uh, it was a really a must win for United. But as expected, City took control of the possession. And Matic and Herrera were struggling to contain City's midfield, particularly Silva and De Bruyne. They were spraying the passes around and United's defensive unit not being tight enough, which allowed early chances for Yeus and Sterling, which they spurned. Um, but eventually, uh, their pressure paid off uh, a slackness in the defence a few minutes before the great break, left Silva free from the, on the six-yard box, and guess what? He spooned it past the hair, for the opening goal. No sooner had we sat back down and a dreadful error by company uh, failing to clear a cross and Rashford drove it past Edison it was level at the break. Well after that break the same pattern continued as we'd seen in the first half but it took another dreadful piece of defending for City to restore their lead. The ball was hoofed into the box Lukaku on defensive duty attempted a clearance with his right foot and blasted the ball at Smalling's back. It bounced off Smalling at the feet of Otamendi. A few yards out, he taps it in and De Gea had absolutely no chance. So City ahead again 2-1. The response, well, without Pogba, I must admit United lacked creativity in midfield. Eventually, Marino put Slatten on and Mata. Uh, they replaced Herrera and Martial. But it was to no avail. City deserved the win. And to be frank, they could have had more. Mourinho complaining about uh, offside that wasn't awarded by Oliver, but I saw nothing really uh, that uh, could have uh, represented what he had seen. It was a good competitive set, uh, game, but City always looking the better. So that's it. That's the wrap on the week 16. Goal of that week. Oh, well, it's got to be Defoe's chip. Uh, his second. Uh, what a great goal. Uh, don't forget comments please and questions to my Facebook John Vickery or to uh, YouTube John Vickery again see you next week bye